What is up guys, Marcellus Williams, aka The Swole Fester, here to educate you on health and social well-being. And today guys, I'm going to be going over some general guidelines for you to follow whenever you're going into an off-season for powerlifting. Or even if you're not a powerlifter, somebody who competes, but you're somebody where you focus on strength, you have blocks where you build up to like a testing day to test your lower maxes on bench, squat, and deadlift. And really these can almost apply to any you know movements that you're uh, that your main focus that's what this video is going to be covering today i was asked to cover this in a, in a comment in one of my earlier videos and you guys already know this channel is for you guys what you guys want me to cover that's what i'm going to cover um so also be on the lookout i will be doing a video here pretty soon over what my thoughts on for like full body every day the pros versus cons of that do i think it's optimal do i think it's efficient because i've had a lot of you both on instagram and youtube ask me to cover that um really over like the past two to three weeks and I actually just finally figured out why you guys have been asking about that but I will save that for when I actually cover that video so with that being said let's kind of just get into these general guidelines and there will be in the description box down below um just some videos that go into more depth over some of these topics I'm going to be covering in this video so let's just like you know variation work accessories just because like I said this is going to be going over general guidelines so if you guys want to like get a little bit more in depth with the specifics of something I'm talking about, just check the description box down below and you can watch those videos to get a little bit more insight as far as that. But with that being said, let's get right into it. So the first point I want to cover guys is when should you actually have an off season? Because a lot of people just think of like, you know, an off season being like the time between one meet and another, but that's not always necessarily the case. Depending on how much time you have between one meet to another, you may not actually have time for an off season. Using myself as an example, my last meet was June 22nd and my next meet is going to actually be um, Raw Nationals um, in October. So I didn't really have time for an off season. I pretty much had 16 weeks between that meet and then this one. So the first block was kind of just a block to kind of get myself detrained, kind of desensitized. And then from there, we're now at this point, we're nine weeks out. But we after that first block, we were 12 weeks out and we're already in meet prep mode. Everything we're doing is setting myself up um, for meat prep. So we're already like, you know, very specific with everything we're doing. Um, the workload that we're doing and how we're specifying and intensifying it from block to block is all to get me set up to compete for Raw Nationals. So understanding that if you want to have like an actual decent off season, you probably want closer to like five to six months between a meet. That's just the reality of it. Otherwise, it's not so much an off season. It's just kind of like a little bit of downtime if we have to swing right back around into meet prep. So I did want to kind of clarify that to make that clear because I think a lot of people think like, oh, what do I do when I only have like a one month of an off season? Well, four weeks in powerlifting is not really an off season. That's not enough time to really do anything as far as like some actual off season building. Now, the next point that I want to get into guys is that assuming you actually have enough time for an off season, right? The first general rule is you want to get to volume right and i express this because a lot of people they kind of get this high after like doing a meet you know you just hit some heavy singles and or maybe you didn't hit quite as heavy as what you want and they want to kind of get back in the gym and keep pushing heavy keep trying to like you know push their limits because they're still kind of like caught up in the meat mentality but the reality is is there's a time to test and there's a time to build and your off season is your time to build that's when you want to get to the point where you're you know introducing more volume on the big three and really just more total workload overall with your your programming now mind you this doesn't mean that all of your days need to be looking like oh you're doing sets of eight to ten on all three lifts every single session that's not the case at all you still want to have structure for example me um, my days, as far as the general setups, don't change. I still have my primary days, which tend to be my heavier, more intensity focused days. I have my secondary days, which are focused more on, you know, volume and hypertrophy. And then I have my tertiary days, which are kind of like those additional volume, um, technique, kind of individualized, specialized days based upon like the lifters needs, goals, etc. The difference is, whereas, you know, when I'm closer to a meet, my primary day is probably going to be something like, you know, heavy singles and then maybe I have like some heavy back down triples, something like that is instead maybe I'll build it to like, you know, a top set of three or a top set of four and then I'll have like back down sets of five. And instead of maybe just having, you know, three back down sets of five, because obviously if you get closer to meet, you kind of taper the volume back a little bit so that your fitness can be higher than your fatigue. I'm actually gonna be building my volume sets over time. So maybe I'll start off with like three back down sets, but then it turns to four back down sets and then five back down sets. Just kind of trying to like, you know, push my overall workload capacity, really build upon that now that new elevated baseline that I had from hitting those new numbers because now it's the time to be like hitting a different type of PR instead of so much, you know, PR on singles. It's like, okay, well now I'm hitting weight um, for triples I've never hit before, for sets of four and five I've never hit before. That's kind of what we're focusing on in terms 
terms of volume you know on your secondary days that's gonna be the days where you have days that are more focused on like you know sets of like you know six to eight reps or maybe on your tertiary day you're doing like you know something like sets of 10 but at no point do i think there's really a, a benefit or a need um unless you're doing something like an amrap set for a power to be doing like you know i'm doing like sets of like 12 to 20 you still want to be specific with what you're doing and that's actually going to lead into um general point number two which is going to be um make sure you're very specific with your variation work have a why for any variation that you go to and the reason i really want to express this is because a lot of people when they think about off season, they instantly think like, oh, variation, variation. There's even some people out there who promote, hey, you don't even need to be messing with the barbell in your off season, like for the first block or two, like stay away from bench squat and deadlift or any variances of it. Um, just really like desensitize yourself completely. And to me, that just doesn't make much sense because the whole purpose of an off season is to build up your capacity and have something to build upon for your next meet. And in our powerlifting meets, we do bench squat and deadlift or whatever your three you know whatever main moves you're focused on if that's what you're trying to progress on then you need to make sure that you always are doing them or some variation of those movements when you're training otherwise you're you're not actually working on that stimulus right now that's not to say that you shouldn't have variation work and once again there will be a video in the description down below that goes over like kind of how to decide what variations you need to be doing kind of based upon your weaknesses etc but that's the big thing have a why for your variation like are you doing this variation because you noticed a weak point at your last meet or in your prep for your last meet and you know that this variation is going to help you with that weak point are you doing this variation just because you feel like your body's feeling kind of worn out from overuse injury maybe you're you did comp squat three times a week um and comp competition deadlifts two times a week going into the meet so maybe now you have a little bit of variation work to kind of help offset that and avoid overuse injuries that's fine but even then there needs to be specificity like on your primary day make sure that those variations that you're doing are going to actually like have pretty significant carryover to the comp specific lift for example a paw squat that's something that carries over very well to a normal squat um beltless deadlifts obviously carries over very well to your normal deadlifts maybe a normal competition bench but with a slightly closer grip things like that can help offset overuse injuries and kind of help you objectively like decrease load while still kind of keeping exertion where you want and keeping pretty good specificity of the movement because it's so similar and then on the secondary days that's when you can you know do variations that aren't quite as close maybe on those days you do something like large and press front squats, things of that nature that, you know, aren't quite as specific, but still will have good carryover and other functional benefits to what you're trying to do movement wise. But it's just important to actually know why you're doing your variation movement, because if you don't have a why, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. And in some cases, there's just not a need to have a whole lot of variations. Maybe you're feeling really good and fresh post meat. So you're able to like kind of just build volume with the comp specific movements themselves. And that's totally fine as well. It just kind of comes down to what your goals are, how you're feeling, and what your programming is looking like for that off season. And then the next general point, guys, I want to talk about is going to be your accessory work. Now, you guys know that I'm somebody where I actually promote having accessory work all year round. And I'm someone where I'm doing accessory work even like the week of going into my meet. The difference is when I'm in like meat prep, right? A lot of the accessory work I'm doing is just kind of help give me a little bit of additional volume on um, the muscle groups. And a lot of this also just helped me feel good and healthy. Like, for example, um, yes, there's things like, you know, doing lat pull downs to promote scapular um, uh, depression. There's things like rows where you're focusing on like retraction. There's things where you're focusing more on external rotation. But then there's also those movements like, you know, like landmine presses where you're actually focusing more on protraction or the row with reach where I'm focusing on T-spine rotation. Those are movements where I'm just doing things that we don't usually do in the big three for overall health. And once again, to help prevent overuse injuries. Um, but in general, like the accessory moves are kind of almost more like on a maintenance. Like, you know, I progress them here and there when I can, and there'll be videos in the description box down below over how to progress your accessory moves as well. But they're kind of like, you know, I progress them as needed or when I feel good enough to do so. They're not really my focus because I'm doing so much workload on the big three when I'm close to a meet to where I'm not really trying to focus too much on the accessories. They're just kind of there as needed. But when you're in your off season, that's when you really want to push those accessories more. That's when you want to start doing things like, you know, your heavier rows, like pin lay rows, um, weighted pull-ups, um, overhead press, things like that. Just um, your bigger, your, your accessory movements that, that are still compound movements that could really be specialized movements in of themselves. That's when we really want to start pushing those and promoting growth on those. Why? Because it's not, the off season is the time to be building. That's the time we're trying to put on as much mass as possible because we know relative to the individual, the more muscle you have, the more potential force production, AKA the stronger you can possibly be. So that's why it's important to have those, um, those blocks, those periods where you are focused on your accessory work and where you are trying to progress the numbers on those 
just as much as what you are with the big three. Once again, the big three will always be your main focus if you're a power lifter, but how much more work you can put and how much more of an emphasis you can put on your accessory work is going to vary from block to block, especially when you're in an off season. So that's something else that you wanna keep in mind. And then the last point guys is that these are all general guidelines, right? Obviously, when you wanna get more specific or get more in depth with some of, this, some of this stuff beyond just looking at those videos that have in the description down below, it's all about understanding what your goals are. Know when, when your next meet's going to be. Know exactly how much time you have. Have a game plan with your coach and then know what your individual goals are. Like for some people, it's different. Some people, they wanna focus more on putting more overall general muscle mass on their frame. For others, they have these functional weaknesses in their movements that they really wanna focus on fixing. And even though sometimes those two goals go hand in hand, sometimes you have to shift your focus to one more than the other. So that's just something that's really important to keep in mind. And that's pretty much it for these general guidelines, guys. Like I said, um, want to go over this because it was requested and i thought it'd be a really good video topic i know there's a lot of stuff out there over like what an offseason should look like some people tell you hey it needs to be just as specific as in prep just you know way more volume some people say oh no it needs to be all variations so hopefully these guidelines kind of help give you a better idea of exactly what your offseason should be looking like and what all you should be doing but that is pretty much it for the video guys hope you enjoyed it if you did go ahead and comment down below let me know what you did if you're not leave a comment down below let me know what i can do better like the video, share, subscribe, keep it simple, specific, scientific, and I will catch you guys later.